everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we've got another special interview for you. Today's guest is Aimbot Calvin. Now many of you I'm sure will be well aware of who he is because he has a very famous and popular Twitch stream. He's very well known for being a highly skilled player as well as very entertaining. So we thought it was a great idea to interview him about a variety of topics including Season 10, Brigitte, the new Hanzo, McCree and I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. Now before before we get started, I want to say a massive thank you to Calvin for actually coming on the channel for this interview. He was a great guest and I really hope we can have him back again soon. Links to his social media and his Twitch stream will be in the description box below, so make sure you guys go and check that out if you don't know about him already. So with that all said, we can dive straight in. And the first subject that we're going to be covering today is a very hot topic on everyone's mind, and that's the new season. Okay, speaking of season 10, yep. first of all, just give me your overall feelings about this season. It's honestly a roller coaster, but I, I like I like that Blizzard has turned turned into this diverse meta. I mean, you can really play anything, and before this, it was basically dive for more than a year. And every season from season four, people got better at dive. That's why a lot of the the hit scan junkies are now like falling off. I guess you could say that's why like Soldier McCree has been falling off. Widow hasn't been really played unless you're like really sick at Widow. So even though this this meta right now in season ten is cancerous. I enjoy it. I know I've turned, <laughs> I've basically turned into a, a support man because I feel like at my level, I feel like I could play Bridget, you know, at a high level instead of all these other, you know, ranked players that, that didn't adapt to Bridget as, as uh, fast as I, can, I did, so. Okay, so you actually like the diversity of all the different things being played? Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of odd actually because for most people's experience, I think I can sum it up. Brigitte comps are what everybody runs and the meta comp is her, Ryan, yep. Zaya and triple support, right? That's mm -hmm. what everyone would assume about this season. Is there something about your level of play that makes that not the case, do you think? I think it's because I could just play whatever I want. I don't really only play Bridget all the time. You could still run 2-2-2 if you're just better than the other team. You don't always have to run Bridget in your comps, but I mean, I mean if you want like a brawl comp, you want to run Bridget. Okay, so there's this famous clip of you playing Rhine and oh, kind of being bashed wow. around and stunned and all that kind of stuff. Can you just uh, tell me how you felt playing Rhine in this season? And actually, do you have any larger thoughts about Reinhardt and his place in the game right now? Man, you could tell. You could tell from a noob Rhine to like a pro Rhine. I was versing Fate the other day and he knew how to control everything. I, I couldn't play the video game. And I feel like you can't even play the video game as Ryan. You'd have to be so patient. And I admire a lot of Ryan players for that. Yeah, this new Ryan seems to take a lot more sort of self-discipline and control yeah. because dropping your shield, well, that can be ripped. And even if you're not dropping your shield, you know, that can be ripped too yeah. um, because of Brigitte being in the game and her shield bash. What would you say is the biggest lesson that you took from adjusting to playing Ryan in this season? Because I've seen on your stream that you have fill picked a lot more than you would have previously. As I've been watching Ryan a lot, you want to take the risks. You know, you want to press W. You want to you want to go for the risk plays. I think if you don't, then their then their team basically controls you, and you want to be and you want to be the one to control them. You know what I mean? So you want them to use their Brigitte's shield bash maybe to stop you doing what you're doing instead of imposing their will on you. Is that basically what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Seeing as you're fill picking a lot more and you're, um, mm -hmm. as you say, your Brigitte is uh, really good. What is it about your Brigitte that's better than everybody else's Brigitte? I think when I first started playing Bridget, I, I noticed a lot of them don't create space for the Reinhardt. That's what you're supposed to do with Bridget. If you enable your Reinhardt and your Zarya to do what they what they can, you'll basically carry the game as a Bridget. And it's really easy to to get armor as well. Uh, her ultimate, sorry. Her rally is extremely powerful going into like the next fight. Do you think she'll be as good when that rally goes down to 100 armor, not 150? I think she she could still be power. I think her kit is still powerful. I don't know if her value is that high anymore because that extra 50 shield. Or 50 armor. I liked what you said about how you saw Brigida's job as creating space for your Rhine. How do you do that? Basically, what I would do is I would wait for the other Rhine, the other Zarya bubble, 
enemy Zarya bubble to, to wear off. As it wears off, that's when you stun him and then everyone just bursts him down because he doesn't have that initial, he doesn't have the shield to save him or the bubble to save him. It feels like to me that the game is based a, a, a lot around cooldowns at the moment. I know it has before, but right now it seems to be crowd control, powerful abilities that can insta-kill and that's all like cooldown based. Whereas like, I think you could make an argument that in previous metas it was based a little bit more around sort of raw mechanics and now it's much more about management of abilities, more like a MOBA. Do you, do you agree with that sort of thought? I do actually agree with that. I think it's good that they, they implement this because solely because it's a whole different game, basically, if you think about it. Because you've you're, you're so used to like seeing dive and you're so used to playing dive that now you have to adapt to to playing these kind of you know this kind of style when it comes to like Ryan Zarya because a lot of people forgot how to play Ryan Zarya comps now and it's kind of refreshing to see that. So you've mentioned that one of your favorite things about this new season is that for you at least you get to play more or less what you want most of the time because you can play a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, what's your least favorite part of the season? Probably that all the hit scans are basically useless. So you'd have to adapt to like projectile heroes such as like Hanzo or like Farah. And I'm not really like a projectile player. And I, I try to play, I've tried to play them, but you could clearly tell that. So I just have to like, I guess, adapt to it. One thing you talked about, about sort of this death of hit scan. I don't know if that's paraphrasing you a bit unfairly, but that's what I took from what you said. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's to do with a lot of the hit scan damage apart from obviously Widow and to a certain extent McCree, they just don't kill things quick enough for for this season, yeah for this meta in particular honda does so much burst damage compared to like widow or compared to widow mccree uh soldier so you're obviously quite famous i would say for playing mccree as i mentioned earlier mm -hmm. can you just give me your thoughts on his place in the game and do you think he's underpowered do you think he's just where he needs to be but the meta has kind of moved past him or do you think he actually needs improvements at this point i think mccree right now i think he's the most balanced hero in the game that's why i don't think he needs any changes but the meta is just what's stopping him from doing what he should be doing the problem with him is that you have to really really be lenient with him you have to to, like work with him as a whole as an entire team if a team cannot enable him then he can't enable himself and it sucks to say because he basically needs a mercy he doesn't have like that self you know value i guess to stay alive most of the time there's just heroes that are just so much stronger than him right now so it's all it's, it's all right i do agree with you that he's very balanced but in comparison to some of the other heroes or some of the other synergies in particular, mm -hmm. not just singular heroes. I'm thinking particularly like Ryan and Brigitte, you know, that's not mechanically very difficult. It requires good game sense and things like that. But playing McCree to a certain standard asks something of a player that playing those two in a synergy doesn't necessarily. Do you think we'll ever see a time where he'll be one of the best DPS options in the game again? Or do you think it's just a natural progression. The more heroes are added, some are going to fall by the wayside. I think it's just how Blizzard deals with other heroes and how that all goes about. Because McCree right now, there's, there's just stronger heroes than McCree. I mean, Widowmaker is just a stronger McCree if you think about it. Hanzo is so much better than McCree when it comes to like burst damage. Because you, uh, you have this burst damage of like a thousand, I think. And then McCree has this flashbang and six shots. His ultimate is completely, is completely useless as well when it comes to that kind of stuff. It's a suicide button, right? It's either a suicide button or a zoning button. True. So you've alluded to it a bit there. What do you think of the new Hanzo? Do you think he's... I think he's fucking ridiculous right now. And the good Hanzos are actually just stomping the entire game. I mean, they get these like mercy pockets and it's so, it's so incredibly crazy. And I'm not really a projectile player, so you could tell from a good Hanzo to like a noob Hanzo. If you could talk directly to Blizzard and they would implement whatever suggestion you said, what is the one thing that you would like to see them do to improve Overwatch? For, you know, just for your own satisfaction and for making the game more fun to play. I think what they should do is add like a rank S type system. Rank S is basically what comes from CSGO. Um, they have this system where all these, all, all the top tier players basically play against each other and they have the same desires to win, you know, same skill, stuff like that. And you could tell like who's just better. But those are essentially like pro pickup games, right? Basically, yeah. But it was for money, so it was a lot. It was worth a lot more, and people would come back 
and they, they would want to practice more you know they would want to play more obviously there's some incentive to play well as well then isn't there and that was exactly. rank s was through esea right if I'm yeah not mistaken. a third party client so do you think a third party client would improve the game you know just to find pickup matches in general for because rank s is the top rank for right for all the pros but there's yeah. rank a rank b rank c do you think that would actually help a game like overwatch i think it's under blizzard's hands because overwatch doesn't have their own dedicated servers for these for these third party clients to do that i feel like it would it would help a lot though the people who uh, have the drive to go pro and stuff would easily get to the top is part of that desire to see something like that because overwatch ranked isn't great practice it's not. It's probably the worst practice you'll ever get if you're playing ranked. If you're trying to go pro. Why is it such bad practice? You gain all these bad habits that's not really in a team play, but in a ranked play. You basically play ranked to refresh refresh and freshen up your mechanics and stuff like that in your aim. I think everything else, like sometimes if you don't have the strongest mental state, it'll, it'll sometimes get to you. You know what I mean? And if you play the game for as long as I have, and when, you, when you've seen the game pay, pay, basically hit its peak, and then go from that to like basically slowly going downhill when it comes to like competitive ranked and the players that you get on your team and against you. It kind of gets to you sometimes. Oh no, I can absolutely understand. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We all know that pain. All the players of Overwatch, I think, understand that pain of ranked driving us crazy. I know I could win some of these games that I'd lose, but your 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 team is what's not making it capable. You know, you'd have to play double times your standards. I think in some of these games and sometimes you can't really do that when you're against like maybe the best players in the fucking world a lot of your fans are always asking you on stream are you going to try out for the overwatch league do you think you're good enough and i always find your answers quite interesting is there a particular reason why you haven't so far attempted to join a team or scrim uh, with perhaps a contenders team to reach the league at some point the real reason why I didn't want to join any OWL or Overwatch League teams is because everything that happened around XQC basically is what stopped me. And I feel like I'm very unprofessional when it comes to everything about the league. I don't want to give all my time to like scrim and then as well as stream. I think it burned me out really fast. After having played the game for such a long time, what about the game still excites you? What makes you want to play it? I have a lot of love and passion for Overwatch. A lot of people might think I might get like very really tired of the game or mentally or mentally tired of the game, but it's just the passion coming out of me, you know? You know, I played this game from the basically from the ground up. I played this game since release. I'm very loyal to it. Thank you very much, Calvin, for coming on today for today's interview. Uh, can you remind everyone who's watching again where they can find your stream and where they can find you on social media? Yeah, they, yeah, you guys can just find me at uh, at Aimbar Calvin. Should be a, my app. Is that for both Twitch and Twitter? Yeah, for both Twitch and Twitter, Discord, everything basically. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much for being a great guest, and I hope you can come back another time fairly soon. Yeah, it was fun. I liked it. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Please remember to check Calvin's social media and Twitch streams out in the description box below. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you never want to miss another video of ours again, please click the bell icon next to the subscribe button on our channel to join the notification squad. You'll be in great company. And finally, please follow the Your Overwatch Twitter as where you can find updates about new videos and other cool stuff. I've been Eddie the Chump with Aimbot Calvin, and until next time...